it doesn't even seem like there's a lot of pressure on the cables on the other side of where I'm lifting. Probably the support legs under the lift arms really take uh, most of the weight. The first big log is off the ground and the lift seems like it could handle even uh, much more weight. So that's a great news. This log is even bigger than the one I just lifted. I can barely even touch my arms if I try to hug it. Да сам. Я першу сицер я бил драх, не? Я не знам, тут ще мало прейкър, море, ма... Ито само до Бруноцата спално врече, ако рабим утре.
this morning one of my friends came here and maybe some of you already know him from some of my previous videos. He finished his log cabin last year so he already did all of this work and there were a few things that I wanted to ask him so this morning we did the first log. We didn't manage to completely finish the log. We just done the final scribe so now I have to cut out the notch and I think I'm ready also to start my first log by myself. So I will first now start this one from the beginning, finish it and then I will do that one until the end. It's nothing so uh, difficult but you have to be very careful especially on the final scribe and the final cut needs to be accurate pretty much to the millimeter or uh, later I will have the gaps between the logs. Right now it's still not that complicated because I just have to cut the saddle here and the notch over the saddle. I don't have yet to cut the notch on all of the log but still it takes a lot of time because you have to do the rough notch then take the log down, cut out, put the log back then the final scribe and the final notch, the saddle, polish all the saddle really good. It just takes a lot of time of uh, moving the log and really making sure that everything is done perfectly. Because here you cannot do a mistake or cut too deep or something like that. Then uh, the log is pretty much uh, thrown away, at least for the walls. Maybe I can use it for something else later. But I cannot throw away these uh, logs. I don't have uh, spare logs to replace them. So I need to take uh, maybe an hour or two extra and make sure that uh, all the scribing, the cuts and everything are, are done uh, perfectly. I will be talking a bit more, at least uh, for this first log, because I would like to explain what I'm doing and uh, what you need to be careful for when placing the log on the wall and how to position the log and all that. So the first thing I do is I look the log and I try to decide in which way it's curved or if it's not even curved then it's straight. If it's not curved it doesn't matter so much how you rotate the log. But if the log has a curve like this log is curved to my uh, right, it goes in this way. The curve should always be faced outside of the wall. The curve should never be facing up or down on the wall. The best it is if the curve is facing outside and maybe even a bit upwards. The reason why is the best that the curve goes out of the wall is when you place the next log, if you have the curve up or down, then to close the biggest gap between the logs, you will have or in the middle or at the end really a wide notch and you throw away a lot of the log. So by facing the curve out, that way you have the flatter sides of the log on the top and on the bottom and that way you minimize the size of the notch and you don't throw away a lot of the wood by cutting out the notch that is too deep. Now that the curve on the log is facing out the way I want it, I have to find the center of this log. And what I need is the vertical line of the center of this log. Because then I have to align the center of this log with the center of the saddle on the log below and I have to do the same on this side. I have to decide where is the center of the saddle and I have to align it with the center of this log below.
This is also why having a lift like this is really amazing. Not just being able to lift the log up, but also move it and place it exactly where you want. And then you can just slightly lift it up or uh, put it down without any problems. It saves so much time aligning the log. It's really just a pleasure working like this. I don't even want to imagine anymore having to move or lift these logs by the hand. I've done enough while peeling and I saw that I have to come up with a way that will allow me to move the logs easily without using much of the energy. What I have to do now is the rough notch, that way I drop down the log a bit and the final scribe is more accurate. On the rough notch you don't have to be precise or lose too much time because uh, it doesn't matter that much. What you have to be careful is on the final scribe. I have to drop down this log by 22 centimeters, but I will do the rough notch just uh, 12 centimeters, and then I will do another 10 for the final scribe. Knowing how much you will drop down this log depends already on the next uh, two rows of the logs. But there's uh, a lot of information and I would like to dedicate a video just explaining this and the uh, scriber setting. And also how I got this scriber is very interesting. So there's a lot that I would like to talk about and, and I'm afraid that I will end up talking too much. So I'm thinking to start another series where I share my thoughts, my ideas and more into the detail uh, about the work so I don't have to talk so much in the videos where I'm more focused on the work. When scribing you have to be really careful that you don't move the log.
when I have the rough notch and the log is in place, then I lay out the saddle and and I just use the four points to cut out the saddle. I don't draw the whole saddle because you have uh, bumps and curves. It would be impossible to know where the chainsaw will pass. For me it's the best just to mark the top of the saddle which should be five centimeters from the top of the log and you can find the top of the log easily by seeing when the bubble is in level, where the level is touching the log, there should be the top of the log. And from that point I measure five centimeters on both sides and these are the top of the saddles. And then for the bottom of the saddle I kind of know where my final scribe will be, so I put the saddle around 2 or 3 centimeters below that uh, scribe line. And all my saddles will be 70 centimeters wide, from the first saddle up, up to the top to the last saddle. So I measure from the center of the saddle 35 centimeters to each side. First I do that on the top and then with the level or with something straight I just uh, transfer that line down lower somewhere in the middle of the saddle. So these now are my four points for the saddle that I will be looking when I start cutting. I start cutting at this line with the chainsaw a bit under the angle so you go in and then you try to make a nice curve and meet the other two points and then again slowly going out and meet the last point of the saddle. The saddle should be as smooth as possible without any curves or bumps and also under the same angle so that you don't start like this and then you go and finish out under a lower angle. Also it's very important that this side of the saddle, this angle of the saddle should be as close as possible also to the other saddle because later when the log will settle down if one saddle has a different angle then the log will block on this saddle and here it will create a gap. It's quite scary to start the cut you really have to trust yourself that you will do it right. If you go too deep uh, I don't know if you can uh, fix that. It's better to first go a bit uh, higher and then correct it but of course the best is if you do just one really nice cut that way the saddle will be the smoothest and also later when you pass it with the sandpaper you have a lot less uh, work. If you have uh, bigger bumps then you will spend a lot of time uh, passing it with sandpaper and making it really smooth and you have to pass it with sandpaper to make it as smooth as possible that way there is less chance for any gaps or air passing in and also it looks a lot nicer. When it's polished and you see the growth lines that is uh, something I like a lot. I'm not that happy with this saddle. I started uh, cutting too deep then I had to adjust and as soon as I have to adjust or start over the saddle doesn't come out so smooth.
I don't like sanding. The fine dust really gets everywhere. And I need to get the mask. It's pretty much impossible to work like this. Also it's not good for the lungs or the eyes or anything else. Final result is pretty amazing. I'm really happy with this saddle. It doesn't even look like something that was cut with a chainsaw. It really has such a nice curve without any bumps. was the hardest one to cut because this log is pretty big. But it came out the best I think out of all the saddles so far. And I'm already at the final scribe. Of course this log is easier because I only have to do the saddle notch. I don't need to scribe the full log. This way is perfect because I can learn on these first uh, two logs. And also these two logs will basically be out of the house because the floor comes above these two logs. If I make uh, some small mistakes they are uh, allowed on these two first logs. Then from the next logs up I uh, shouldn't do any mistakes because then uh, if there are any gaps the air will be going inside the house. I have to drop this log by another 8 centimeters. Here the scriber won't pass and also on this side and this happens many times so now I need to take away a piece here with a chisel otherwise it's impossible to scribe. This is pretty normal.
I've cut the first two saddle notches and I have to say that it's not easy. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I had to do a lot of corrections with the chainsaw to get a bit of a concave inside the log so that the edge will sit better on the log and also with time it will be able to compress a bit and the inside will not block it right away. And before cutting it with the chainsaw, I passed all the edge with the chisel. That way when you cut close to the edge, you don't get the splinters and you don't ruin the nice line. came out quite good. I'm actually pretty happy with this first notch. i done a few small mistakes, but I know what I've done wrong, so I can correct that on the next one. Here is a really good example why it's important to first pass the edge with the chisel. If you can see the inside cuts are full of splinters but the edge is still really smooth.
šlot. Dobro. 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 Come on, hey. 